a very good evening to everyone on behalf of sol foundation i extend a warm welcome to everyone attending today's journey to safety webinar series on the subject road safety role of engineers and road users let me begin today's session by providing a quick overview of the indian road safety campaign after which i will turn the session over to dr k v r ravi shankar sir i request all the participants to post their questions in the chat box which will be taken at the end indian road safety campaign is the initiative of sol foundation working towards making the road safer in india it started as a project at iit delhi due to death of students in the road accident iirsc has gradually grown to be the largest youth led organization in india iirsc has been working in close association with organizations such as un who ministry of road transport and highways various state governments and other research centers across the world in its endeavors towards vision zero to achieve this irsc has worked with over 15000 colleges and 25000 volunteers across 50 plus cities in india in various domains such as awareness technical technical innovation law order policy medical etc indian road safety campaign has launched the journey to road safety webinar series to bring all the stakeholders of road safety in one platform where we try to spread awareness about the importance of road safety and the protocols that one needs to ensure now allow me to introduce dr kvr ravi shankar who is the distinguished speaker of the day in 2011 he received his phd from iit bombay he has more than 10 years of teaching and research experience and presently working in transportation division of national institute of technology warangal his research interests include safety analysis of vehicular inter interactions in mixed traffic conditions pedestrian behavioral analysis and modeling crowd dynamic analysis and emergency evacuation planning and capacity analysis of highways in mixed traffic conditions dr ravi shankar guided five phd students and three more thesis works are currently in progress he also guided 43 mtech thesis works he has 30 journal publications to his credit in reputed journals and is recipient of dst fast track project for young scientists by science and engineering research center government of india he has worked for major research and consultancy projects related to comprehensive traffic study plans road safety audits junction improvement plans traffic signs and mark marking strategies etc he is reviewer of several transportation related journals and delivered 25 invited lectures now let me turn the session over to dr ravi shankar without further delay over to you sir yeah thank you thank you for the nice introduction uh, so let us begin our lecture and a very good evening to all of you in this kind of hard uh, the hard times uh, we are facing right now and of course so what whatever we are discussing right now the road safety is also another hot burning topic and let us explore uh, together what we can do uh, as a road as a road user as a engineer and uh, as a in various roles of our uh, daily life and uh, against this background so i would like to put up uh, this presentation uh, with this for you hopeful uh, that i am i'll be able to cover majority of the topics and uh, give some kind of a inclination towards the road safety for the general public as well as the uh, professionals so this is how uh, my presentation will go on Uh, and if in any case uh, at any point of time if uh, any problem is there with the audio or the video please let me know uh, so that i can take care about them and uh, so initially i'll be starting with the the most uh, important statistics of course uh, that is for the all the wrong reasons and uh, then we will discuss about the what the major stakeholders and uh, what is the role of the engineers in this road safety improvement exercise and what are the basic points to be covered particularly i would like to mention about the side distance considerations please uh, make mark a point of this and we are going to deal with some kind of a case studies regard with regards to the side distance criteria and uh, speed is another major uh, factor uh, in most of our accidents 
and uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the role of the spade and uh, more importantly what is the role of these road users how they are going to play a major role and uh, beyond the normal helmet and seat belt to use what are the additional uh, points to be taken care by the road users uh, we'll try to address them in this presentation so that is how my, i planned my presentation so let us go into the technical details of this so if you look at uh, the current situation so we are uh, saying that uh, the covid situation and uh, almost every country uh, the entire world is facing a difficult situation for the past one year or so and we have already seen uh, there is a the fatalities in india uh, as per the latest estimate is uh, around 2.15 lakhs but you just look at the kind of uh, for the past 5 years for the matter for the past 2 uh, 3 decades if you look at the kind of uh, fatalities that are happening because of these uh, road crashes almost every year we have a wave in the past one year we are saying about this kind of a number of fatalities because of the covid situation but every year we are facing a situation similar to the covid situation but unfortunately the problem is uh, we are not much concerned about it maybe uh, it uh, we are not uh, much cornered uh, with, with regards to the safety of course there are many educational measures have been taken up by the irsc and other organizations but in spite of that the people are not uh, reluctant to follow the safe practices and that is what we have to look into it how to enforce them and how to make ourselves uh, the future citizens for the future citizens and the future road network how safe it will be okay let us explore so considering these situations and let us explore and let us understand what is the global road safety scenario and how india is faring at that level so if you look at uh, some of the statistics that are available online so there are almost like 1.35 million uh, road traffic deaths every year so this is what i am saying uh, the uh, kind of a uh, situation we are in and uh, the road traffic injuries are the first cause of death among the children and the young adult aged between 15 to 29 so that is the most worrying factor and uh, unfortunately more than 50% of this uh, fatalities are occurring with respect to the pedestrians and uh, the two wheelers and the motorcycles so that is a cause for worry and we have to work uh, towards improving our roads in, in terms of design criteria etc and as per one uh, estimate uh, it uh, by the 2030 it is estimated that the road traffic injuries will be the top five leading cause and definitely if proper measures are not taken into account definitely this will be the reaching the, uh, the first or second position without any doubt and if you look at the comparison as per the who estimates so africa is leading in terms of the road traffic deaths but of course our region asian region is also not far far behind behind it except with some kind of a, the european countries are a little better compared to the other regions and this is what in the age group of 15 to 19 years and 22 to 24 four years the road traffic injuries are the most uh, the burden of the road traffic injuries is here and this is a cause for concern to all of us and uh, that is at the global level then if you look, look at the indian uh, country level uh, statistics uh, so for the past five four to five decades it is almost the same situation you can look at the exponential increase in terms of the the total fatalities and this this trend is going to to be uh, increasing in the coming decades and uh, uh, as i said earlier the motorized two wheelers are the occupying more than one third of the accidents as per this report estimate and there are some couple of uh, websites are available 
some of them are provided by the for example this missionroadsafety.com where you can get uh, statistics regarding the each and every state and how many accidents are happening so this is just for uh, i'm showing you to for the benefit of uh, some of the audiences uh, who are not familiar with this kind of uh, information of course this this information is provided by irc itself and uh, as the latest estimates uh, if you can look at this uh, road traffic uh, deaths in terms of thousands and the road number of road accidents so immediately after 1980 or 1990 or so so with the exponential increase and the technology development of the automobile sector with the rapid increase of the vehicles the road traffic problems also have increased and uh, it is steadily going on at this level for the past few decades so against this uh, kind of a statistics worrying worrying statistics so what can be done what is the role of each and every stakeholder and first of all who are the stakeholders so if you look at uh, some of these uh, stakeholders uh, so there are planners academicians like me and researchers and uh, uh, some enforcement professionals traffic police people and uh, of course as an engineer also we they have a major role in terms of uh, suggesting some kind of a remedial measures but that is not only the fact even we have to involve the general public also into this road safety mission then only we can get uh, uh, a, a drastic results in terms of improvements otherwise the situation will be the same uh, something similar to the previous gra graph you have shown in the previous slide now let us explore what is the role of this uh, engineers and the road users in this particular presentation and we have already covered the decade of road for road safety decade of uh, safety uh, in the past uh, one decade it has been completed with some suggestions that is a well planned exercise but in spite of that uh, uh, still there are many shortcomings we have to see on our roads so okay, let us explore what is the role of the engineer in this design aspects so the basic design objective with uh, whenever we are designing any element of the road uh, element is or the highway element is we need to reduce the severity of the potential conflicts so what are these conflicts and how they are how they are to be reduced we are going to see in with uh, one or two case studies and more importantly we have to facilitate some kind of a, a natural movement of these vehicles so every vehicle every driver has their own uh, way of maneuvering their, their vehicles and vehicle limitations are there so we have to look at them whenever we are designing any particular highway highway alignment and as far as possible we need to minimize this turning and conflict points and the more importantly i am saying about this particular point providing a natural path for the permitted movements and when that natural path is obstructed by any kind of our design element then that creates some kind of a conflicts in the minds of the drivers and uh, that may become a, a major bottleneck point in terms of the safety criteria and uh, more importantly we have to keep about this side distance criteria okay anyway i'm going to discuss about that in detail so the visibility plays a major role and that is a major point in uh, point of concern in our principles of design and uh, there are many other points are there i'm not going to discuss in, in detail about them but uh, some kind of like providing a tap parts and providing some kind of a gaps but where to probe where they have to be provided and what kind of a channelizing elements will play a major role it is not okay maybe sometimes we have to think beyond the code books beyond the out of the books out of the box solution let us have a look uh, at this picture say for example uh, 
if you just look at this uh, it is a major minor road crossing where there was a, a minor road is uh, passing through a, a a major highway section so there are a number of uh, signs and markings are available that is well and good but the, there is one issue with uh, until unless you come up to this point of this kind of a stop line of this crossing we can't have a a proper uh, visibility of uh, which vehicle is coming from which direction maybe it is because of some kind of a, the level of the alignment or the level of the road so this could have been uh, well taken care at that uh, during the planning or the design stage itself because it is very difficult to uh, change the this kind of alignments once the road is laid and it is working for so many decades and uh, it is one of the uh, one of the uh, film, many fatalities occurred at this point of crossings and this is a quite a common situation in many of our uh, major minor road crossings and in spite of uh, several uh, several this kind of messages and all those things uh, it's not going to be working out and at the same time we may not be able to make them all of them as a great separate intersections our budget won't permit us so then these things start to be taken care at the design stage itself uh, and as proper with a proper safety audit uh, during the planning and design stage itself so that is one point i would like to stress upon it and one more uh, uh, criteria is during night times there is a high incidence of uh, this kind of uh, accidents are going to happen so just uh, look at this uh, the clear recovery time generally ranges around uh, 3 to 6 sec uh, 6 seconds uh, as per one of the research studies and you can just look at this. what kind of a glare is there and how uh, this uh, under this kind of a glare situations whether uh, my visibility is very much constrained and whatever the design uh, safety decisions we are following, uh, they, may, they will become uh, unnecessary things and uh, a fraction of a second uh, deviation is uh, quite, quite sufficient enough to cause a major fatal accident. And of course, uh, to use this situation, now we have some kind of LED uh, headlights are coming up but still uh, there is a we, we need to look at uh, from that point of view also regarding the glare recovery times are lesser than this uh, what is, has been reported so that is a great uh, there's a scope for research in the in that direction but at this point i would like to give you one uh, information regarding this reaction times so this is what uh, generally will be for the general uh, road users also Whenever we are uh, burdening our minds, uh, whenever we are driving, we are speaking with our friends, we are doing texting or we are looking at the mobile phone and we are doing uh, so many things. So a multitasking approach is quite a common exercise and that is one reason for many of our accidents. But the situation is whenever when too much information is there to our mind, and that too, when we are concentrating on a particular driving task, definitely our reaction times will be much more than, and we are not going to expect something all of a sudden. Under those unexpected situations, definitely the reaction times will be much more, much higher. And this is going to lead, uh, lead to a fatal accident. So for that reason, please, when we are driving, please concentrate on the driving task nothing else driving means only simply driving nothing else should inter interfere with that and the re reason is just simple the reaction time will be much higher and a fraction of a second is sufficient enough to cause an accident okay that is uh, i would like to touch upon those two points then uh, the major focal point of our design is the intersection and where the majority of the conflict, conflicting movements are occurring just like you have seen the uh, some kind of a major minor road crossing 
then uh, in those kind of situations uh, how to uh, provide a proper, proper visibility proper sight distance and where we can have a, all this uh, all the corners of the intersections so here the sight distance will play a major role and uh, this is quite common in uh, majority of these things t and skewed intersections so if there is a possibility a 90 meter step wherever it is possible will always play a safe game in this kind of a design just the reason is whenever this uh, merging or the diverging is happening particularly the merging things or this kind of a right turnings so they will have a scope for uh, waiting area and whenever they are merging they can look at the uh, traffic that is coming uh, the th uh, through traffic and they can safely merge to the traffic stream and if you just uh, ignore this kind of a tap for the uh, intersections and just the merging is happening at a inconvenient angle and the side swipe collisions are uh, going to be prevalent and that is what what is observed in some of these kind of uh, intersections so this point has to be well taken care wherever it is possible along with the uh, road signs and markings that are prevalent maybe this is applicable for the previous intersection also whatever we have seen now look at the, some kind of a, the minimum side distance required and at some kind of uncontrolled intersections so uh, in those kind of situations uh, just based on the design speed we can have a, a simple calculation of uh, the safe stopping side distance that is required on the major road as well as the minor road or both can be major roads, whatever it may be the case. Then if you can provide a proper side distance so that any vehicle driver on this driving at uh, V2 design speed will be able to observe any other vehicle at an appropriate safe stopping side distance. And uh, both the vehicles can stop within this safe stopping side distance then this side distance triangle can be well maintained then at least from the, our design point of view we are taking care that the safety is guaranteed for this intersection and uh, maybe because of this kind of obstructions or uh, uh, land use developments if a proper side distance is not available then definitely this kind of intersections needs a proper speed control measures not only speed uh, uh, limit signboard. In addition to that, we have to explore for another other types of speed control measures. Okay, we are going to see it towards the end of this presentation. What are they? But uh, let us look at uh, some of the intersection that is prevalent in uh, one city. So myself, I am driving this vehicle. I am approaching one intersection. You can understand what is the importance of side distance. And I almost uh, reached the um, reached the intersection. This is a Y intersection, basically. I'm trying to take a right turn. There is a flashing yellow sign is there. I came up to this point, but I don't have any kind of uh, information regarding what is coming from the other leg of the intersection. And until I reach almost the intersection, then now I have a, an idea on, okay, there are some two way two wheelers are coming and joining with my right of way. Then hardly this distance is visible to me. This is during the broad daytime and you can expect the situation how it will be during the night time. So until I, uh, I raised the middle of the intersection, I don't have a, any idea on this kind of a movement of the vehicles from the other sides of the other legs of the intersection and this is going to be a safety concern and these kind of a markings so you can see 
these are the signatures due to the road accidents that happened and one more uh, i'll show you here immediately close to this intersection there is a median opening here you can see there's something else uh, some vehicle is coming and uh, in the opposite direction to my truck so there may not be any need for this kind of opening very close to the intersection so this thing these points to be, are to be well taken care uh, during the operational stays and if a proper side distance is not maintained as i have shown in this video then how can we expect our design to be catering to the needs of the road users so this is one uh, uh, best example and uh, as per our most said uh, more estimates so the in code of practice so there is at least uh, this is a, some kind of a major minor road crossing so as per that as per their suggestion the sight line should be clear of any kind of obstructions at least on the minor road a 50 uh, the vehicle should be visible at least at a distance of 15 meters and on the major road at least at a gap distance of 8 seconds corresponding to the design speed of the vehicle of the highway section or the major road section and you can you can just simply calculate how much uh, safe gap distance is required uh, if you are traveling at 80 km per hour in 8 seconds how much distance we can travel then at what point the site visibility must be visible to on the minor road and accordingly this minimum minimum visibility distance can be implemented comfortably on the priority intersection and this is a very simple experiment and we don't need much sophisticated instruments and how to measure this current side distances and record this observations is just simply some kind of a, a ranging rod something like this and we can just simply measure using a a, a tape and a, Uh, ranging rods and we can measure how much side distance is visible and how much uh, i have to provide a unobstructed view of the entire intersection and this is a very simple uh, and there are guidelines are available based on the design speed of the major road so if you have a 80 km per hour then i need a minimum visible distance along the major road around 180 meters then in the previous video you have seen that okay i'm just uh, assuming that 50 km per hour is the design speed then i need a 110 meters distance at least but hardly i have a 10 meters or 15 meters nothing more than that and then how can i expect that uh, the fatalities are going to be reduced or the road accidents are going to be reduced at that point of intersection definitely not so this, these points are to be well taken care by the engineers and uh, wherever there is no traffic control so there these are the minimum recommended side distance value even if you are uh, uh, providing depending on your design speed the proper simple safe side safe stopping side distance is quite sufficient enough at this intersection but uh, in all these calculations there are some assumptions the the most pro promising uh, uh, major uh, observation uh, assumptions in this are the height of the eye of the driver is 1.08 meters if it is a car and if it is a truck 2.33 meters but of course uh, for other vehicles we are not the code of practice is not taking into consideration these objects uh, that requirements but this is what the true major uh, composition we got well considered in our code of design and the height of the object is 60 cm and of course the reaction time is 2.5 seconds this is what widely we will be using and uh, we have to look at uh, the requirements uh, in, in terms of requirement for other types of vehicles uh, but here uh, there is a catch here a driver cannot perceive uh, movement set, uh, beyond certain distance and anything uh, beyond a uh, half a kilometer or so it looks something like a small object whatever may be the case so these are our, our human limitations and we have to uh, 
look into these aspects also whenever uh, we are designing any particular highway element and uh, whenever uh, we are taking any operation particularly i you have seen uh, myself driving uh, through an intersection generally these kind of uh, times uh, they need around 6 to 8 seconds to maneuver through this uh, process particularly if the more number of intersection more number of legs of legs are present in the, at the intersection then we have to be a little careful in, and in uh, designing our elements of the intersection and uh, the major point of our intersection design criteria should be we must reduce the conflicting area and the conflicting points as less as possible and there is another point like there will be some distractions by the side of the road you can just see by the side of the sign board there is advertisement so are we giving uh, information to the road user regarding the traffic signs or we are asking them to look at uh, the kind of way. of course there is uh, i could not find any kind of a exclusive study on this uh, kind of a distractions during due, due to this uh, advertisement boards but definitely there with the, that is going to be a cause for concern and uh, this uh, once again using the, you can see the, in this video how difficult uh, the difficulty the heavy vehicle is facing while maneuvering through this intersection of course uh, since we are filming it maybe he is very careful in maneuvering the vehicle otherwise uh, it could have been something else and you this kind of a the damage caused to the median itself shows that the safety problems at this intersection and uh, there is no proper side distance is available and uh, wherever the side distance is available there are some issues like this these are within our view and we can well we this can be well taken care and you can see the, this kind of situation during night time what happens to that so a proper road safety audit a periodical road safety audit maybe every one year or every two years is uh, what is needed on most of our roads and one more uh, point as far as our designs is concerned is the bus stop location and the placement so you can see here in this photograph uh, the uh, almost uh, the bus stop is uh, uh, even though there is a proper bus stop is available the buses are stopping on the carriage way itself and this is going to be a cause for concern and there are uh, different guidelines are available regarding the bus stop and bus bulb uh, the placement where how it should be placed at what distance so what should be the distance from the intersection and what should what length it should be but the only thing is while converting from the code of practice to the on on ground details and how uh, we are going to deal with them and how it is being practiced there is a gap between the code of practice and the practical implementation of this code of practice so if you can if you can as an as a the role of engineer is to reduce and to make into account whatever uh, the good points are there not only in the, in the indian code of practice maybe the uh, other countries code of practice also they must be truly transformed onto the field and then only we can see a drastic reduction in the number of accidents in the near future otherwise uh, the trend is going to continue like this in this fashion for years to come and uh, there are some uh, even i have seen in some of the some kind of a uh, well developed cities also uh, improper signs there are recommendations regarding what height it should be what kind of a material then there is no need for any kind of a other kind of a science there should be uniform code of practice across the country
and in spite of our developments in spite of our uh, educational measures in spite of our uh, the much needed uh, code of practice still there is uh, violations in this kind of attention and uh, definitely we need some kind of a, a proper enforcement measures to make them of course there might be reason uh, why they are doing it maybe there is a uh, residential locality nearby what or maybe the case they don't want to travel extra 2 kilometers or 3 kilometers or is it a proper uh, improper uh, placement of the median opening this is one major issue that uh, that is prevalent in majority of these cases so then a proper placement of this kind of a median openings uh, will release this kind of situation and with a proper enforcement to avoid this kind of a situation so that uh, there is no violation of the rule of the road and then one major another major uh, uh, challenge for the engineers is this kind of intersection with multiple lanes and we have a large conflicting conflict area is available so this is what i am saying so is as far as possible make the mergings and divergings as smooth as possible and reduce the conflict area conflicting area and if possible with a proper selection of the intersection if you can reduce the number of conflicts then at least as from our design point of view we can say that the design is safe enough for the movement of the vehicles as well as the pedestrians and but definitely this kind of a large intersection areas will pose a challenge and that is where we have to come out with some kind of innovative ideas regarding the selection of a proper intersection design criteria and here we may have to go beyond our little, little uh, whatever the uh, information that is available in our code of practice and maybe we can uh, look at some kind of a simulation also to look into this aspects and recently i came across some uh, data data from sky uh, tool so they have got some kind of safety analysis tool we can uh, use those kind of a tools uh, uh, to look into this kind of a aspects uh, uh, for this kind of a situations and this kind of emerging situation particularly for the two wheelers if a proper uh, uh, merging criteria is not available or the merging is happening at a inconvenient angle and they don't have a proper space to wait waiting area while they are making a u turn or right turn so that will be a major cause for turns and uh, this kind of uh, roundabout intersections there are uh, issues with this kind of emerging situations and uh, whatever the safety distance uh, that must be available it should be and recently in 2017 the road safety uh, the roundabout design criteria has also been revised and we have to look at uh, those criteria also whenever we are designing these elements of the merging and uh, weaving areas and uh, this kind of situations the merging is happening here and uh, uh, i would like to show here one uh, one of uh, our recent study uh, where we conducted one uh, we went to one city and uh, we came across this kind of intersection and you can look at this kind of a what is the shape of this island traffic island and what is the need for this kind of a shape uh, uh, i am unable to understand so i am not uh, pointing my finger on anyone but maybe it is a transformation of the true drawing uh, maybe the field personnel the construction people whether uh, they might have done something wrong with it or whatever might be the reason there is no need for this kind of a odd shaped intersection and just simply just uh, 
looking looking at this kind of intersection what we have said is a, a simple a circle with a proper merging and diverging areas but of course here we have we are uh, we, we may be thinking that we are increasing the conflicting area previously i said like i want to uh, as far as possible reduce the conflicting area but at the same time depending on the traffic levels if there is a proper uh, movement of vehicles for so the proper movement of vehicles this is in the heart of the city then uh, if uh, at least uh, three lanes must be available so that uh, all the throw traffic and right turning and left turning can be well taken care of by the three lanes when that is guaranteed there will there will not be any kind of a queue of vehicles or uh, any kind of a uh, competition between the vehicles and uh, this will definitely increase our capacity as well as safety is also guaranteed because this is in the heart of the city definitely there will be a movement of buses and personally we have observed that at this particular intersection the maneuvering of the buses is becoming very difficult with this kind of the odd shape of the high traffic island and that is a safety concern for the other vehicles also then a simple so this is what i am saying a nice simple natural path of the vehicle if you can guarantee it and if you can take about care about them with a proper entry entry angle and entry radius entry uh, entry weight and exit weight and a proper uh, weaving length and weaving width then safety is guaranteed with increasing capacity of the intersection so that is what i am saying uh, we have to combine our capacity guidelines and uh, our safety guidelines together maybe the code of act is different but whenever we are designing it we have to look at from the perspective of the safety based planning and design this is what the present requirement as far as the engineers is concerned and uh, that is what my little suggestion to all the engineers so you get all the good points from the various code of practice and use you were just uh, as if you are driving a vehicle through that uh, particular intersection or the highway section just like how i did it so it is my quite my usual practice whenever we are uh, redesigning any kind of uh, this kind of intersections i will ask my students and myself uh, if possible uh, please drive through them if it is already operational of course for a new highway section definitely we can take the help of some simulation tools or some other tools but definitely this will be a good point a good exercise in terms of uh, the safety of uh, uh, guaranteeing the say uh, to guarantee the safety of uh, all kinds of a vehicle and this is what our revised intersection and uh, still there are some issues with respect to the person crossing we have suggested them but due to some site constraints uh, they could not be implemented and that is what you can see still the person vehicle conflicts are still happening but uh, if you can reduce that also that will be uh, maybe uh, the safety is of the pedestrians also is guaranteed at this particular intersection and similarly we came across we have done uh, almost like 35 intersections have been redesigned as a part of one study and uh, we have this is the revised intersection of course here uh, due to the angle at least they are intersecting uh, we could not do much uh, but we have to see we are working on that and uh, we have to see whether uh, any further improvements uh, can be done and uh, after modifications how the intersection is going to fare and so that is uh, one uh, some of the points i would like to uh, address upon and uh, the another major point is the speed management because speed is the killer in many of our particularly fatal accidents then uh, uh, the driver speed choice depends on various factors it includes the type of vehicle the road condition traffic conditions uh, kind of enforcement speed zone limits what not there is almost like 10 to 15 factors uh, that will govern the the choice of the speed of this 
but one point i would like to stress upon is whenever you are searching a speed limit sign board don't ask the driver to reduce the speed from a design speed of uh, some 60 or 80 kilometers per hour all of a sudden to 30 40 kilometers per hour that is not a good exercise we need to implement some kind of a speed a gradual reduction of the speed so maybe it is 80 kilometers per hour design speed is available then somewhere around 750 meters from the intersection or from that particular point of where you want to implement the speed reduction measure make it a 60 then 50 kilometers per hour at 250 meters then at this point you make it as 30 kilometers per hour then there is a sense that the drivers also when they fail okay there is a gradual reduction of the speeds and have to even if one thing is missed they can see the other sign boards and they can uh, re, uh, they can gradually reduce the space and similarly when they are leaving the point also they should be similarly gradually increased so this is a good practice of uh, uh, that has been suggested in the recent board practices and these speed zones will uh, as uh, will uh, maybe may guarantee a proper uh, information is conveyed to the all kinds of the road users then one more uh, uh, this you can see this i don't want to say much on this they're calling it as a speed breaker i won't call it as this is something else almost the bottom of the vehicle is uh, touching on it. so this has been lied immediately after one fatal accident that is true but this itself is causing a safety concern at this particular point and there are different guidelines are available regarding the height of this uh, speed breaker and what kind of a shape should be guaranteed only thing is the implementation there is a problem so that that is uh, also a, the responsibility of the local engineer to safely guarantee that that uh, a proper quality control is maintained in, the, in implementing these measures and uh, as per one of the uh, i think this is from tamil nadu i, I came across uh, there are uh, the number of uh, speed breakers speed humps are a cause for concern in one of the settings so they are calling it as spine breakers not speed break so that is the situation and uh, I, I came across in one of the one, one highway section where there is a uh, this kind of a multiple speed breakers are allowed so this is uh, seems to be working uh, at that particular situation but it may not be so in uh, this may not be recommended at each and every situation maybe on a case to case basis we may have to go for this kind of a measures and then uh, i would like to uh, uh, look at uh, this point uh, stress on this point regarding uh, the travel speed and uh, the impact uh, impact speed so if some vehicle is traveling at 70 kilometers per hour and if it hits uh, some, uh, another vehicle or uh, another pedestrian it is going to hit at a, this, at a speed of 46 kilometers per hour and uh, if the distance is not quite sufficient enough then this is going to be a fatal accident and the impact speed is uh, very much crucial whether the accident crash is going to be a fatal or a major or minor one and this has to be understood by not only by the engineers even by the general road users also and if just a 5% cut in your average speed can result in 30% reduction in number of fatal road traffic fatalities. So our uh, main criteria should be as far as possible, reduce the speed, take as much as possible the various speed control measures that are prevalent, that are that can be implemented at the intended section.
that is uh, and one more point is uh, whenever we are planning this kind of a highway alignments you can, you just look at this the kind of alignment it is there I, so now the situation is uh, uh, the land use has been developed and uh, there is a, a lot of development on either side of the highway road section we can't do much but definitely whenever this this happened i have seen my personally i am seeing this particular section of the road for the past two decades and i have seen uh, maybe more than a one decade or so when this highway is being expanded and this road section is being expanded from a two lane to four lane whatever it is definitely the development is not uh, at this level this definitely this kind of a sharp curve or alignment could have been corrected easily and now it is almost impossible near impossible to correct this kind of alignment and this is one major black spot in one of the cities and it is very difficult to whatever may be the kind of a proper safety measures you are going to look at it they are going to uh, uh, they are not going to yield any kind of a good results so while planning itself we have to take a proper care about this highway alignments so that is one one of my another suggestions to the engineers and the planners to come to combine the safety at the planning stage and you just look at it we are forgetting about the, our fundamental best okay jeepra crossing is there for the name sake on the paper it is there that's it are we asking the persons to do some kind of high jump or long jump where is the median opening where is the pedestrian refuse how they are going to cross it so zebra crossing is laid okay it is there that's it and the, we don't need a, this is just simply common sense nothing else i don't want to say much more on this so that is what uh, the role of the engineer from various points of view uh, and how the safety can be guaranteed now we are going to the other end of the our presentation what is the role of the road user a common man as a driver as a person as a passenger and nowadays we have so many distractions from the mobile and from the outside world and definitely we need some kind of a self speed management education and this last point i am going to close our my presentation with this long, last point of the respect okay let us see what the road user can do in this in this kind of a situation so maybe there are uh, there are a lot of uh, develop, uh, educational measures have been taken up regarding the use of uh, helmet and seat belt and just my uh, my close acquaintance with some of my friends and family members uh, everybody is fed up with this kind of uh, educational measures See, that is good we are saying that but they were they are not going to listen to this kind of helmets and seat belts maybe we have to go a little bit beyond that and we have to educate because nowadays every every human being is becoming smart enough so we may have the need to educate them so we need not say what is uh, stopping side distance and all those things but definitely we have to we may have the need to educate them in terms of this kind of uh, elements if they are driving at 80 kilometers per hour and they don't have the distance to stop the vehicle within 45 meters then definitely the impact speed will be more than 66 kilometers per hour which is going to result in a fatal accident and if they can maintain a 50 kilometers per hour speed definitely they can within that distance they can stop in time and uh, there even if there is an accident it is not going to be fat we need uh, we may have to somehow inculcate this kind of education to the general public as well so this is my point my perception uh, maybe if i'm if i'm wrong you can correct me and one more point is uh, there are certain tolerance levels 
for example you take this case take the case of a car and car head on collision if two cars are traveling at 35 km per hour head on collision is going to occur at 70 km per hour and nobody can survive at this kind of impact speed and if you take the case of a car on pedestrian uh, interaction it is going to be fatal beyond 20 and 30 km per hour that is the reason why in many of our cities and uh, city intersections and look, road sections we have this kind of a speed limit of 20 to 30 km per hour and the we have uh, the popular uh, the probability of fatality with respect to the impact speed you can see below 40 km per hour the probability of fatality will be less than 30% and this is small increase will drastically increase the fatality ratio and somehow we have to infuse into the brains of the drivers not to drive beyond said this said speed limits so the self speed management is what is we have to infuse into the minds of the drivers so just simply putting up a sign board may not be sufficient we have but we have to educate them what is the concept behind this kind of a speed control measure and how they can be safe and others can be safe if they can drive well within this below 40 or below 30 km per hour so that is what is uh, may be required uh, uh, then uh, uh, let me uh, before I wind up uh, there are a couple of points out there so as i said earlier a 5% cut in average speed can result in a reduction on the number of 30% reduction in number of fatal road crashes and similarly a, a pedestrian has a 20% risk of dying if struck by a car traveling below 50 km per hour but that increases to 60% for the same case if the impact speed is at 80 km per hour so this is what we need to educate the road users so whether they want to select at 80 km per hour with this fatality probability or select at 50 km per hour with this probability probability of fatality so the choice is for them so maybe we have to go for in addition to the regular speed limit sign boards and the gradual reduction of the speed limits we have to go for repetition of the signs wherever it is required and we have to give advanced transitional speed limits and with a proper introduction of some kind of its elements or speed tables or uh, some other kind of uh, elements like markings or uh, any kind of a uh, or a, uh, any kind of a speed violation uh, detections whatever may be that somehow we have to force them by enforcement engineering measures educational measures reduce the speed of the vehicles then 50% of the problem can be solved at least then if any fatality is happening that is beyond our hands but one of the major challenge in the near future will be the distraction particularly the mobile uses distraction and who is using any kind of a driver they are uh, drivers they are using mobile phones they are going to be four times more likely to be involved in a crash these are not my words as per one uh, recent study itself and they found that in majority of these exercises there 96% people feel unsafe they knew that it is unsafe to use the mobile phone but uh, still 41% of them are using for the work related purposes whether our life is more important than our work maybe we might have understood in the past one year how difficult it is and 47% of them people receive calls on their mobile phone while driving so this is the current situation and 60% of them people do not stop at a safe location 
so this is going to be a cause for worry that we have to we have proper studies required uh, uh, well planned studies required to look into this aspects and uh, a proper uh, we have to educate the general road users regarding this kind of aspects also and uh, of course as i said earlier uh, other kind of distractions are also present then uh, these are the six years generally we will come across some three years four years maybe now uh, we, we may have to one more add uh, one or two more years engineering enforcement education this is what we might have seen till now but uh, emergency we are doing all uh, the 108 and all these things and the education irc irsc all this uh, uh, organizations are there they are doing well in this kind of exercise but still we have to go a long way and uh, a proper evaluation that is the need of the hour. and uh, we have to encourage the safe driving practices then definitely more and people more and more people will uh, move towards the from the unsafe side to the safe for side from fifth, more than 50 kilometers per hour to less than 50 kilometers per hour maybe i can look at from that perspective so this six years will definitely guarantee that the future of our road safety education and engineering then uh, uh, just to sum it up uh, so we need an inclusive design considering the safety criteria it should be centered on the safety rather than the capacity or the delay reduction and we have to sometimes we have to go as i said with some case studies we have to go beyond our codes and standards and we have to provide a proper visibility visual guidance and this is our future design of forgiving roads or self explaining roads the future designs will be in the, uh, centered on this kind of aspects design of a forgiving roads and more importantly for the general road users what i would like to say is a little patience and a little respect for other life and other vehicles is quite good enough we need not do much just to show a little respect to the other vehicles and other pedestrians and maintain a safe distance by this time in the past one year we understood what is safe distance between two persons so we are saying uh, that a uh, 6 meter distance or whatever it is similarly maintain the safe safe same safe distance between vehicle to vehicle vehicle to pedestrians that will guarantee this is the vaccination i can say for the road safety fatalities maintain a safe distance there is no other vaccination and to support my point i would like to show this how the a proper practice of uh, in, in addition to the practice of rules like wearing a helmet and uh, uh, not triple riding and all those things this happened on the hyderabad varangal highway section you can just look at this there was a fatal accident one spot if they could have waited for a few seconds 2 3 seconds let the other vehicle pass through their young engineering graduates one fatality and one major uh, uh, injury happened at the due to this so definitely if a proper uh, uh, care has been taken care of course they are not wearing helmet that is one the major point here but in spite of that even if uh, they could have waited for a little 2 seconds or 3 seconds this is what the majority of uh, i have seen majority of the drivers are doing this they won't wait they want to optimize or they want to use whatever the little space that is available we can do optimization in everything else but not on the road a little patience is quite sufficient enough to guarantee the safety on the roads 
otherwise this there is no issue with uh, the from the design perspective on this road section so this is what i have uh, my final message to the road users and uh, i would like to conclude with this uh, a road safety embedded planning and design is the need of the hour and we need to go for a regular safety audit exercises throughout the year at, at least one in, once in a year and in this direction uh, uh, nits and iits are uh, doing along with the more they have taken up uh, some very a majority of these national highway stretches but more than this uh, we need to involve the general public and we have to go beyond our uh, general education and uh, we have to inculcate some kind of a sense of responsibility in the general uh, public then only the future safety is guaranteed so i would uh, with this uh, i i uh, am thankful to irsc for giving this opportunity to share my thoughts and i am thankful to all my teachers and uh, any kind of unsighted resources in this day thank you one and all and we can take up uh, any uh, quick questions if anything is there thank you sir for such a wonderful and insightful presentation now i have a couple of questions for you but uh, since we have less time uh, i will ask just one question and rest we will take from our wonderful participants so the question is what protocol should be implemented by government so as to ensure the involvement of pedestrians in the road safety by the government uh, in what is it by the governments to ensure the involvement of pedestrians in road safety no i am not getting what uh, what kind of okay, sir. what protocol should be implemented by the government to ensure the involvement of pedestrians in the road safety okay involvement of pedestrians in road safety yes sir yes. right right so is it uh, i think uh, i understand that like uh, uh, the question is uh, what the government uh, guidelines should uh, uh, take into account take taken into account what the government should do yes sir what government should do in this government case. policies should be there yes sir right right yeah so that is regarding the particular pedestrians i might have said in the one of the slides also there is uh, uh, the pedestrian and vehicle separation is not very much clear in most of our uh, standard code of practice and uh, it is not simply separation uh, a proper uh, guidelines uh, are available but the implementation of them on the ground is one major uh, policy is required regarding this uh, uh, the gov government policies is required the implementation and uh, wherever a pedestrian uh, 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 traffic is very high definitely we need to suggest some kind of a extra safety measures uh, and we may have to separate the pedestrian traffic on all together just like something like a, how we are going for a uh, underpass and overpass for the vehicular traffic in a similar fashion we may have to go with uh, and of course i have not touched uh, much upon the pedestrians because of the lack of time and maybe we, if uh, if it is required we can have a, another session exclusively on the pedestrians uh, we can take up on that okay sir so now let's moving on to the uh, questions which our participants has asked so the first question is by abhinav deshmukh okay uh, the question is if taken in positive manner how the curriculum development right from early schooling will make the difference in better understanding of road safety and awareness right so actually uh, i am uh, not sure what is the current situation but majority of our uh, school education also there is a, a chapter in one of the uh, one of the subjects uh, regarding road safety maybe that is not uh, sufficient enough uh, maybe we have to give at a, at various stages at various levels uh, a proper uh, uh, educational videos and we have to show them how to do what not to do what to do then uh, definitely uh, if you, uh, because the tender minds uh, definitely they'll have a, they can remember them when they are uh, doing this kind of a driving practice and uh, 
definitely that will go a long way and it takes a, at least a one decade one generation uh, to see these kind of effects then only this kind of a road safety awareness uh, will be fruitful enough that is what my view that was a nice explanation sir so the last question will be please specify the study source of speed reduction and fatal crash reduction which has asked by shan mukha speed reduction and fatal reduction yes sir right so speed reduction measures uh, one is uh, by enforcement that is what uh, our people are doing it by speed radar guns and uh, fine uh, and imposing some fines but of course uh, uh we have to do some study uh, some some of my students are working on that but in addition to that uh, it is not simply um, putting up a speed breaker I, i have shown you some example that won't uh, give you any kind of a speed proper speed, speed reduction measure but we have to uh, give uh, much more beyond that our uh, design should uh, include that kind of a proper speed reduction one example is uh, a narrowing of this kind of the roads wherever there is a very high uh, uh, sorry i mean to say uh, the width of the road is quite uh, sufficient enough and we can somehow narrow it uh, and with a proper uh, reduction of the narrowing of the road widths uh, definitely we can uh, reduce the speed of the vehicles that is what how we are doing it with a lesser entry weight compared to the exit weight at the roundabout in a similar fashion we can do that but uh, only one or two measures won't uh, give any results we need to go for a multi factorial multi factor approach for the proper speed reduction measure. and at the same time educating the general road users regarding the speed limit reduction thank you dr ravi shankar sir for sharing your views on such an important issue it was truly a wonderful and very insightful session i hope the audience also find this webinar quite beneficial as well uh, so at last i would like to conclude today's session by thanking all the participants for their presence and we hope to see you again for the next installment in our quest to make the road safer for each and every citizen of india thank you you can fill the form and uh, if you want you can leave thank you so much